Now let us discuss the types of amplitude modulations, the big picture. We'll look at the things from the top. There are different types for amplitude modulation. Double side band subrest carrier, double side band blast carrier, or in short AM, quadrature amplitude modulation, single side band, and vestigial side band. So let's try to understand how these are related. We start with a message. In time domain, this message is take, taking the following shape, positive and then negative. And we assume that this message has a Fourier transform. For simplicity, we'll draw a triangle. This is the Fourier transform of the unmodulated message. The first option is to use the double side band subrest carrier, where we multiply the message by cosine. The cosine signal oscillates between minus one and plus one, so we expect the shape of, of the modulated signal in time domain to be the following. Okay. This is the original message, and then we have the negative mirror image, and the carrier would be filling that. In the frequency domain, multiplying by cosine results in shifting the spectrum to the right and to the left in the double side spectrum, and we have a scale of half. If we sketch the spectrum, we get the following object, we get the following shape. And mission accomplished. We have modulated the signal, we have changed the frequency, but now we have doubled the original bandwidth. The original bandwidth was B, the positive spectrum, the bandwidth was B, and now it's becoming 2B, and hence the name double side band. So the major problem with double side band suppressed carrier with this is that if you want to recover the signal, you are not sure whether it's the red signal or the green signal, or it's partially the red, partially the green. The only way to find out is to use a coherent detector. You need the original carrier, and then you compare the carrier, whether the carrier has flipped sign or not. If the carrier flipped sign, it means the signal or the message was negative, otherwise it's positive. So the major problem with double side band subrest carrier is the requirement for coherent detection, the requirement for a relatively complex detector. So to solve this problem, we're going to make sure that our message is always positive. We do this by adding a constant A. Note that this constant will be multiplied by the carrier. So in effect, we have added a carrier, and hence the name double side band plus carrier, or in short, AM. The shape in time domain now will look like this. The signal has now been shifted up. And once we multiply by, once we add the constant, it becomes shifted up. Now we multiply by cosine. We get the following shape. We guarantee that the message is always on the envelope. We can use envelope detector or rectifier detector, a much cheaper detector to get the signal back. The impact of adding the carrier or this constant multiplied by the carrier in the spectrum, we have the original spectrum like double side band, and now we have an added carrier term. So if you look at the spectrum, you get the two deltas. These two deltas represent the added carrier. Now, how much A should we add? We should just make sure that the message is, after the addition is positive, so we have to make sure that uh, the ratio, we have to make sure that A is greater than MB. We also define the modulation index, which equals to MP divided by A. And now the modulation index has to be between 0 and 1, because we want the added A to be greater than MP. Otherwise, we get what we call overmodulation. Now, we gain advantage. We have to pay the price. The price is in the efficiency. The efficiency is defined to be the useful power divided by the total power. So. It's the sideband power, it's the power in the information, modulated information. It's mt times cosine, which is half the power of the message, divided by the total power, which is the power in the carrier and the power in the sideband. So we use this formula to find the efficiency, which is usually low. Okay, so now both these techniques give you double sideband, double the bandwidth requirement, and they could be decoded in an easy way like we have done, but we pay the price with, uh, with efficiency. So is there a way we can improve the bandwidth efficiency? The answer is yes. We do this through what we call QAM. QAM allows you to send 
two different messages M1 and M2 over the same frequencies. So notice that these two carriers are shifted to FC. But one of the message is modulated by a different language than the other message. Although they occupy the same bandwidth, but one is using the cosine and one is using the orthogonal sign. We can prove that these two messages can be recovered. So what did we gain by doing this? We gain the advantage of bandwidth efficiency. We can transmit two signals, each of bandwidth B, and the total will be just 2B. Okay, so we gain something. Now we are going back to the problem of the requirement of coherent detection. So we have the same original problem like double side band subless carrier. The other thing here, although we got uh, half the requirement in bandwidth, we need two collocated messages. We need to send two messages. So a natural question would be, can we just get half of the bandwidth of when we modulate? So instead of getting the double side band, we get single side band. So we're looking for something like this, either the upper side band or the lower side band. This is called single side band. So the natural development here is what we call the single side band. And we have two types. One is upper side band, single side band. Another one is lower side band, single side band. How do we generate single side band? The following expression shows you how to do this. We have the message modulated by cosine minus plus the helper transform of the message modulated by sign. If you want the upper side band, you, you take the upper signal or the upper sign, which is minus. If you want the lower side band, you take the plus sign. So the advantage here is clearly have the bandwidth, but now again, we require coherent detector. So somebody would say, can we add a carrier to recover and use non-coherent detection? The answer is in effect, yes. But the problem is that you can have single side band with carrier, but the price you pay is that you have to have a huge A compared with MB, not just A greater than MB like we did a double side band, uh, double side band with carrier. Now, the amount of added carrier must be much, much more, and that will make the efficiency very low. So instead of adding carrier, usually they use pilot or small carrier to simplify the reception. Now that we have said, we have two techniques that, uh, that requires double the bandwidth and two techniques that give you bandwidth efficient or just B for transmitting B hertz. Now the problem with single side band here, it requires sharp filter to get half the bandwidth. You need a sharp filter, whatever or however you do it, you need a sharp filter. And this is not usually easy to do. So we come up with an intermediate solution, which we call the vestigial sideband. So what's vestigial sideband? It relaxes the filtering. If you start with B, instead of going to all the way to 2B, you can have 1.25B or 1.5B. So the requirement and bandwidth will be relaxed and the advantage, okay, so this filter is not perfect. It affects the signal here. It adds part of the signal here. So the bandwidth will be some way between B and 2B. But to recover the signal now, somebody would say we have changed the signal. So we have to make it up at the receiver side and there is a requirement for the design of the receiver. So the receiver should make up for uh, the change that we have done at the transmitter side. Notice that one of the filter is band pass, the other is, is one is low pass. And this is why we have the following relation. Once more, we can add a carrier and um, use non-coherent detection. The requirement in the carrier, the requirement on the added carrier will be less than the requirement on the case of single sideband. You can see the notation here. But of course, it should be greater than double sideband. So it is something in between. So these are the possible trade-offs. And you can see that to go from one block to another, we are trading off bandwidth efficiency, power efficiency, ease of reception, as in the non-coherent detector, and ease of implementation as in the design of the transmitter. These are the things that we have to look at when we choose between these demodulation or modulation techniques. Thank you, and I hope it was beneficial.